Welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is part one of The Brilliant Firefly and the Purple Problem, an original story written for you by Daniel Hines. This is a new standalone story in our Firefly series, which started with The Brilliant Firefly Reborn. You can find that story and the rest of the original trilogy in our feed, and the ebook is available on our Patreon and on Amazon. Just search for The Brilliant Firefly. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Brilliant Firefly and the Purple Problem Part 1 Firefly slashed through the midnight sky like a shooting star, a wish-granting twinkle in the sea-black airspace over Giga City. All's clear up here, Jill said. Anything on the police scanners? She banked and twirled over the endless city. The high-tech flying armor she wore was the last armor she built with her Grandpa Jack. He had been the original Firefly and the greatest superhero Giga City had ever known. But he was gone now, and Jill, young as she was, had taken up his mantle. Ready or not, she was Firefly, burning through the sky, legs hidden by the famous yellow glow of the thrusters. I'm scanning through city ships now came the voice of Specs in her ear. He was her best friend from school and her teammate when she was out in the armor. Jill could see him in her mind, sitting at the computer console in their headquarters, the lighthouse. He'd be wearing the same black hoodie he always wore, even though sparring practice had left it baggy around his middle. Sounds good, Jill replied. I saw an accident, but Cannonball beat me to it, and there was a robbery, but Grimchurch and the Tower Twins had it locked down. The moon broke from the clouds, shining molten silver down her suit. The firefly armor was a thing of beauty, slipping through the clouds with the easy, predator grace of a shark. They'd based the color scheme on the fireflies in Grandpa Jack's backyard, a dusty black with red and yellow highlights, the thruster itself a brilliant, warm yellow. Her split black cape came trailing behind her like wings, Her iconic helmet had its lantern jaw and large, almond eyes. Quiet night, Jill said, pausing to float in the air, feeling a moment of vertigo as the city sprawled out beneath her. Enough, you lousy bully, Spex said, suddenly angry. Spex, is something wrong? Oh, uh, sorry, Jill, he replied. I was playing Fantasy Hunt and this other player named XXSlayer43X keeps blowing up my base just to troll me. You're playing Fantasy Hunt now? Uh, well, Speck stammered. Like you said, it's a slow night. Jill couldn't help but laugh. All right, well, I'll switch to the police scanners for a bit. You go teach XX Slayer 43X a lesson. Perfect, said Spex. He's not gonna know what hit him. Jill rolled her eyes, safely hidden in her helmet, and cruised towards the busiest part of the city, switching her comms over to the police scanners. All was quiet for the better part of an hour, and Jill was about to call it a night when a sudden, panicked voice yelled over the channel. All units, we have a robbery in progress at the First Federal Bank on Claremont and Maine. The suspect appears to be a giant purple... Is that a a giant... Jill turned the volume down as the officer's voice turned into screeching chicken noises. So much for a quiet night, Jill said, firing the thrusters and blazing towards the bank at high speed. Less than a minute later, she landed lightly in front of the smashed-out front of a strip mall. The entrance of the bank was gone, along with most of a coffee joint on one side and the candy shop on the other. The police were setting up a perimeter with tape and cars and holding back some curious onlookers. Firefly, came a growly voice. Glad you could make it. Jill turned and saw Werebear stepping over the police tape. The hero was nearly seven feet tall and wide as a truck. Werewolves in movies never seem to be able to control their transformations, but Werebear never had any trouble. He kept his real identity secret but when a hero was needed, he would transform into his half-bear shape, his face disguised by thick fur and a slight snout. Jill had learned to see him as a valuable ally, 
Since in bear mode he was a near-invincible wall of shaggy muscles and crushing paws. Glad you're here, too, Jill said, the firefly armor disguising her voice to protect her own secret identity. Werebear and a few others in the loose group known as the Giga City Guardians knew her real name, but the police and the crowds definitely did not, and she needed to keep it that way. Any idea what's going on? I was about to head in, Werebear said. So far, all we have is this. He gestured to one side where a chicken wearing a police hat was pecking at the ground. He was transformed? Jill asked, remembering the strange radio call. Into a chicken? Looks that way, Werebear said. All right, let's do this, she said, bending down for just a moment to straighten the police chicken's hat. You just hang tight, Officer Pex. He babocked at her in surprise. You there, Specs? she said, whispering so the suit wouldn't amplify it aloud. I'm heading into a bank robbery. Some kind of transformation super is inside. Hey, yeah, sorry, I'm here, he said, and Jill could hear him scrambling at his keyboard. Just working on destroying XX Slayer 43X's whole setup. Oh, I'm so proud of you, Jill said sarcastically. Can you upload the bank blueprints to my heads-up display, please? On it, Speck said. And a moment later, a ghostly x-ray image of the bank overlaid her view. Looks like the safe is in the basement, Jill said to Werebear as they climbed over the rubble of the missing front wall. Let's start there. Sounds good, said Werebear, his big paws crunching on coffee cups and candy wrappers from the shops next door. They pushed into the bank the scene lit eerily by the red emergency lights. Looks like they lost power, whispered Werebear. Yeah, I guess having a wall ripped out will do that to you. Ahead, Jill saw more shattered walls, wind-blown green bills and a gaping hole leading into the basement. Werebear sniffed at the air, his muzzle curling back showing white, gleaming teeth. Whatever's down there, it's not human he growled. Jill cycled the Firefly suit's view modes through to infrared. That showed her a fuzzy, hulking mass near the vault. It was hard to pick out details, but Werebear was right. It definitely wasn't human. She powered up the light blasters on the back of her fists, her knuckles tingling and prickling with energy. Ready for a fight, Jill dropped into the hole that led to the basement, her armor hitting the concrete floor below with a clang. Werebear hit beside her, silent as a shadow. He went down to all fours and prowled forward like an animal. The lights flickered off and on. Jill's mask switched to black and white night vision to compensate. At the far end of the room, the vault was cracked open, along with half the neighboring wall. Candy wrappers from the store next door crinkled on the floor, and a grumbling giant, bigger even than Werebear, was shoveling something into a large purple duffel bag. Sorry, Jill said. Bank hours are over. If you want to make a withdrawal, you'll have to come back tomorrow. The figure turned, and Jill gasped. It was an angry purple gorilla, its hair bushy and tangled. No share, it roared. A talking purple gorilla would normally be strange, But since becoming a superhero, things like that didn't much surprise Jill anymore. No, 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 Cher, the creature continued. Mine, all mine. All yours, Werebear growled. We'll see about that. He leapt forward. The gorilla let him get close and then swung a heavy fist. It connected with the shaggy hero and sent him crashing into the steel vault door. It rang babong like a bell, and Werebear slid to the ground. That's it, Jill said, and squeezed her hands into fists. Light blasted from her knuckles and slammed into the gorilla, knocking it back into the wall and hammering it one, two, three times, the concrete cracking like a spiderweb around it. Ow, it said. That stung my belly. Put your hands up and surrender, Jill shouted back. It's time to go. 
The gorilla flashed with a purple light and it started to melt like a candle. In the space of a few seconds, the gorilla was gone and a giant purple rhino stood in its place. Me stay, the rhino bellowed impossibly. You go. It charged forward, its footsteps thundering in the enclosed basement. Jill triggered her firefly jets and flipped over it, letting loose a blast of energy into its ample behind as it stampeded by. It barely seemed to notice. This thing is still standing, Specs, Jill whispered. Any ideas? Uh, yeah, working on it, he said in her helmet comms. Just don't get trampled in the meantime. Good advice, she said, snap rolling to the side as the rhino's horn missed her by mere inches. Werebear leapt from the darkness of the safe with a roar. He flew at the rhino and then there was another flash of purple light. In an instant, Werebear was gone and in his place was a cuddly koala bear. No, Jill shouted, blasting the rhino and forcing it back a step. Specs, it transformed Werebear. Like that cop, it turned into a chicken, he said. I should have seen that coming. Careful, Jill. Those transformation powers are strong. Firefly, bother me, the rhino bellowed. Firefly, change too. A streak of purple light shot from the creature's horn and whipped towards Jill. She triggered her jets and crashed into the ceiling, the purple bolt sizzling under her feet. Careful, Jill, Speck said. No way to know if the armor will stop that. I hate magic powers, Jill said back. She hit the thruster and slid on her knees over to Werebear, scooping his koala form up into her arms. Give me some regular lasers or missiles or a death ray any day. Another purple bolt crackled by, denting the wall by Jill's head. I gotta get some room, she said, blasting back up the hole and into the destroyed main room of the bank. She kept going, shattering through the skylight and shooting into the night. Koala Werebear cradled protectively in her arms. Should give us a second to think, she said. Below, the sirens blared. The red and blue lights strobed and emergency workers shouted back and forth. She needed to focus. The shapeshifter was tough, and they wouldn't beat it with blasters or guns. Jill took a deep breath and tried to relax. And suddenly, Werebear flashed purple again, turning back into a massive bear man in her arms. Oof, she said, nearly dropping her friend a hundred feet onto the concrete below due to the surprise of him suddenly weighing a few hundred pounds more. Luckily, the firefly armor could handle the weight, and she found herself awkwardly holding the giant werebear in her arms like he was a baby. Uh, thanks, he grumbled. Maybe you can put me down now. Right, Jill said, embarrassed. She flew back to the ground in front of the bank and set werebear on his feet. Nearby, the chicken with the police hat still clucked at the ground. Why did you change back so fast, she asked. He's still transformed. Guess my magic fought off her magic, he growled. Lucky you, she said, though you were pretty cute as a koala. <laughs> if you tell the others about that, he growled. Relax, Jill said, laughing a little. Secret safe with me, Fuzzy Wuzzy. Werebear glowered and then grinned, the sight a little off-putting due to all the teeth. Thanks for the save, he said. A cop shouted and weapons barked. From the ruins of the bank, more purple flashes blazed out. Officers were struck and turned into goats and pigs and cows. A fireman jumped off the truck and was turned into a Dalmatian in midair, his shout turning to a howl. We aren't saved yet, Jill said, triggering her jets and rushing back into the bank. The rhino saw her coming and disappeared in a flash of purple. A second later, a purple pterodactyl screeched and burst into the air. It had giant leathery wings and a long razor beak. In its vicious talons, it clutched the purple duffel bag, bulging with loot. Jill banked in midair and followed the thief, corkscrewing through the shattered bank roof and burning bright. Specs, I need you! 
The line was silent for a moment, but Jill could hear her friend muttering and typing away. Spex! she shouted, blasting into the sky behind the pterodactyl. The shape-shifting creature wound through buildings and swooped through alleys. It folded its wings to dodge through the steel skeleton of a skyscraper in progress and then spread them wide to ride a thermal drift high into the midnight sky. Spex! Here, what? Sorry, he said. Spex, are you all done with Slayer X42 or whatever? She said. I know your video games are very important, but I need you. It was XX Slayer 43X, he said, and I'm all set. I got his account banned. Great, Jill snapped. Now maybe you can help me with this dinosaur I'm chasing through the financial district. Er, uh, right, Spex said. The blasters don't work, at least not without using so much power you cook the thing. Yeah, Jill said. I'm not much in the mood for prehistoric chicken tenders. Maybe we can run some juice through your wire lasso, he said. Could keep it from having the control to change, like when someone gets tasered and their legs give out. Sounds good, Jill said. Juice it up. I'll get close. On it, Speck said, and Jill heard his keyboard clattering away. She kicked her firefly suit into gear, her legs lost in the wash of brilliant yellow energy. The purple pterodactyl was fast, but even the biggest wings couldn't keep up with her thrusters. She closed the gap in a few seconds, her heads-up display showing intercept angles and ghostly lines. We ready? she asked Spex, creeping in on the shapeshifter. Wires live, Spex said back. Jill raised her left hand, bent in her two middle fingers, and flexed her wrist. The wire lasso whipped out and wound itself around the pterodactyl's stumpy legs. The suit sent 50,000 volts flooding down the line, and the pterodactyl screeched and twisted in the air. Jill pulled the lasso tight, but there was a flash of purple light, and the pterodactyl was gone, replaced by a hulking purple bald eagle. The lasso slipped free during the transformation, and it zipped back into Jill's suit with a zerp. No share, the eagle cried, taking Jill off guard. Leave me alone. No more sting me. Anna Molly, go now. Anna Molly? That's not your money, Jill called back, her armor amplifying her voice against the rushing wind. Don't make me blast you out of the sky. In response, the eagle veered sideways, slamming into Jill and sending them both tumbling. She reached for the purple duffel bag, but the eagle's talons jerked it away. The sharp beak bit into the shoulder of her armor, screaming like nails on a chalkboard. Fine, Jill shouted. Chicken tenders it is. She raised her fist, the light prickling to life along her knuckles, and then there was a blast of purple. It blinded Jill for a second. It seemed to have missed her, but only for a moment. With a sickening lurch, Jill felt herself begin to melt and shift. Spex, she called, or tried to call, but her mouth was gone. She was shrinking in the armor, lost in the dark maze of protective flight suit and woven circuitry. Without its pilot, the firefly armor began to spin wildly, falling towards the ground. Jill felt herself growing wings, she was tiny now, only an inch across, and now her bottom half was beginning to glow. Firefly, she thought dizzily. She turned me into a firefly. Then there was a roar, and everything went black. To be continued. Thanks for listening. 